Hello, hello, and welcome my fourth grade friends back into the art room. Uh, it's Mrs. O'Neill, your art teacher here. Uh, I know that last week's uh, lessons, I gave you a lot to do there, um, and uh, part of that is our uh, Virginia Standards of Learning. Um, they want you to be able to, uh, you can tell realistic um, representational work from abstract work, and there are different kinds of abstract work. Uh, so I know last time was a lot. This time, this video is going to be a little shorter, uh, uh, and it's going to be a little bit uh, lighter of uh, something to do uh, for you, uh, just because I know that last time I gave you a lot. All right, so this time, we're going to be talking about da -da -da -da, abstract art. Abstract art is an amazing, amazing world, all right? Today, I told you there's two different kinds of abstract uh, art in the world. There is non-representational and there is representational. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about non-representational first. And non-representational is exactly what it sounds like. It's not representing anything. So none, in the pictures that I show you today, they are not trying to represent objects or buildings or people or, you know, uh, any of that or animals. There's, there's no representation. It's just lines shapes and colors okay uh, line shapes and colors uh, you know uh, different amounts of that uh, put together uh, to create abstract art which is an amazing art, art form uh, so first uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about that uh, some examples uh, back long long ago when you were in the first grade it feels like forever ago right uh, you know uh, I was a new teacher you were like who is this lady all right <laughs> uh, long ago when you were in the first grade I did an art project with you when we learned about the art of mr. Kandinsky check this out okay so I showed you like different works of art with lines and shapes all that goodness showed you all of that of his artwork lines and shapes and colors right all right so that was a long time ago so you have seen this is probably not your first uh rodeo uh with the abstract art world uh you know and people usually start their art careers in life uh doing abstract art because you when you're like little little you're like kind of like drawing little lines and shapes and you're not really putting things together as much so all right uh, abstract art is an amazing art form uh, and the older you get uh, and the more you practice it uh, the better you can get at putting together compositions all right so compositions where things are in the picture right putting together amazing abstract art compositions okay so all right we'll look take a look at a few more examples lines shapes colors look at some of the shapes that you're seeing in there some of the lines you're seeing in there lines shapes and colors um uh if you were with me that year that i every year uh you know uh and and last year we couldn't do that obviously uh, at the end of the year every year i try to plan a funky uh project for us to do uh for the last day uh that we're together and one year uh, i taught you about jackson pollock who is an abstract painter uh who uh, uh drips paint onto a canvas so he stands over the canvas the canvas is on the floor and he like drips the paint onto it okay it's kind of like a dance so that's abstract non-representational art abstract non-representational art all right and then uh after showing you some examples of abstract art uh, uh non-representational art i'm gonna sh tell you a little bit about one of my favorite abstract painters in the world um uh in history uh her name was alma thomas this is a picture of her this is alma thomas all right okay and she was so good at uh painting abstract making abstract art uh, uh, and making abstract paintings that other artists have actually paid tribute to her throughout the years. So this is actually um, a painting that another artist did of her, which is amazing. Isn't it beautiful? Um, so, you know, uh, she's that famous that other artists are like, wow, like she was so important uh, uh, in the art community, in uh, abstract art in particular. Uh, this is one of her paintings, right? Now, uh, what I think is really cool about the life of Alma Thomas um, is that she didn't start painting until she was 69 years old, uh, which is really cool. So uh, I know that you all are still growing, uh, growing up. Uh, but if there's anybody at home right now that can hear me, hello, hi. Uh, if there's anybody out there at home who can hear me, uh, who might be like, oh man, uh, you know, maybe uh, you're probably not actually old, but maybe you feel like, oh man, it's too old for me to start a painting career. It's not okay alma thomas proved everybody wrong on that and she said you know what like 
I'm 69 years old and I'm going to be a painter. And she started making these beautiful paintings. They're absolutely beautiful. She works a lot with circles, as you can see, and then bright colors. And I like how you can really see like these little, little kind of markings here are really just where she put her paintbrush down and did like a little, little jab with the paintbrush to make these circles and to make these designs. Beautiful. Okay, so she made some beautiful art. Like I said, um, I really admire her because she was like, it's never too late to try something new in life. And she became famous for it. Uh, and she had, um, which is pretty amazing. Um, uh, she was um, uh, the first African-American woman to have a solo show at uh, the Whitney Museum, which is like a big deal. Um, it's a big uh, museum. And uh, she was the first African-American woman uh, to be selected to have a show though there and uh, to have a whole solo show uh, there of her artwork. Um, and I just think she's really an, a, an amazing artist uh, in the world of art history. Uh, so I wanted to introduce you to her today before we got started on our project. Uh, for our project today, uh, what I really want you to do is I want you to get some paper, get a pencil, or uh, you don't have to use a pencil. You could use for this one, you could get uh, paints. Uh, if you got paints, those are great. If you got uh, markers, that's awesome. If you got crayons, colored pencils, whatever you use to color in. And I want you to take that paper and I want you to experiment with making your own abstract non-representational art. So I love this project in particular every year I teach it because, um, you know, students will kind of, you know, the directions are kind of short and the students will get kind of upset and they're like, wait, 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 what am I supposed to do? And I'm like, add some lines and shapes to a paper, make a design. Your only rule uh, for me, uh, you know, and I'm going to keep it really open as to like what you use uh, to actually make this. Like I said, you could use a combination. If you were like, hey, I want to do a little bit of colored pencil here, a little bit of paint over here, you could do that. Right? It's really up to you. But, um, uh, you know, the biggest part of making your abstract uh, non-representational art uh, is just making sure that as long, the only rule that there is, is as long as you're not making something that shows like an object, a person, an animal, a building, that kind of thing. You're just making it non-representational. So it's just lines, shapes, you know, that kind of thing. You're not trying to actually build anything with it. Now, with that being said, every year I will show uh, kids pictures of abstract non-representational art and somebody will look at it and be like, that kind of looks like a bunny uh, or whatever. Uh, and I'm like, oh, it's kind of like um, clouds when you're looking at clouds and you're like, oh, like maybe you see like a camel and your friend sees like a house in the same cloud. Different people see different things in lines and shapes that have been kind of put together, but you're not trying to uh, do that, okay? So there's a difference between that and actually an artist intentionally trying to uh, show you a specific object or thing. Um, so just don't try to put anything down uh, that represents anything. Just put lines, shapes, and colors. And it's normal if afterwards and you look at it, you're like, hey, that kind of reminds me like this thing. That's normal, all right? Um, that'll just happen uh, with that at times. Uh, but for you, the important thing is to just experiment with adding lines, shapes, and colors uh, to your paper to make some abstract non-representational art uh, and commit that vocabulary to your memory. All right, so uh, if this is one of the three that you would like to count uh, for your October the 15th, uh, three artworks that are due, um, just take a picture of it and send it to me uh, through Remind or to my email address. Um, and that's a good way to turn in uh, your artwork. Uh, remember the three artworks due by October 15th is only for, only if you are a student at the elementary school where the tiger is the mascot. Uh, that's October the 15th for the school where the mascot is the tiger. If you go to my other school, my other school is the one where the uh, their mascot is a bee. If you go to the elementary school where the mascot is the bee, right now you still have music. All right, uh, so you're technically still on music rotation, so you don't have anything due by October 15th, okay? Um, you uh, That's because right now I'm at the school with the tiger as the mascot for the first nine weeks, and then I'll be at the school with the uh, bumblebee for the second nine weeks. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, I can't wait to see your abstract non representational art. Bye!